Hello and welcome to Faith Evolving. My name is Mary Claire and today I'm going to over-spiritualize every interaction I've had with a dog. Dogs. Our lovely canine friends. And notoriously, God spelled backwards. There's even a whole gosh dang song about it. I look up and I see God. I look down and see my dog. There are a fair few bit of articles and that song. Amen. <laughs> talking about what dogs can teach us about God. And some of the usual lessons are their unconditional love. They love and accept us just as we are. You know, they're so excited when we come home with the little tail wags and they jump up and they're like, I'm a dog. And you're like, hi, dogs. <laughs> you know, they're super loyal and they have total trust in us. They teach us these lessons about like the prodigal son of they don't care we left, they're just so glad that we're back home. You're like, thanks for revealing that part of God to me in my everyday life, you gosh dang dog. You know, and they trusted us to take care of them. Manna from heaven, AKA kibble. They really just live in the moment and they don't hold grudges against you. Holy smokes, hear me out folks. Dogs. But here's the thing about most of these takes about what dogs can teach us about God. They depend on the dog being your dog that already has your trust, you know, because you live with them. I'm interested in what about a dog that's not your dog? What can that dog teach you about God? I almost said dog. But enter Mona. Such a good girl. Look at her. Such a good girl. AKA my sister's dog who I dog sat last weekend. Now here's the thing about Mona and I. She did not like me. For the first two-ish, I think, years that they've had Mona. Oh boy, oh boy, did I try to pet her and she was not having any of it. She growled at me, so that was fun. Yeah, we were never pals. And when I agreed to dog sit, I had one goal in mind. And that was before this dog took its final breath, or I took my final breath, who knows? Who knows what'll come first? I was gonna get that dog to like me. And I'm really proud to say that it worked. We're friends now. But it took some time. What I know about Mona, the way you win her love, it's through treats and it's through playing ball. Another thing I learned about Mona is that she will bark every time a door opens that's not in my apartment. And you can hear the door to my building in my apartment. She loved barking. Bark, 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 bark. Dog sitting for Mona was an exercise in consent because she's such a good girl. Look at her, she's so pretty. And all I wanted to do was give her pets. I tried a few times before she was ready. I would reach out my hand and she'd bare her teeth a little bit, growl a little bit, and I just backed off. I said, okay, I hear you and I see you and I understand you. I'll leave you be. Then after about 24 hours of kicking it with Mona, I was laying on the ground um, to show her I'm on, my, I'm on your level and you can come to me if you want to. And I remember I had asked my sister, I want to show her that I care about her and I don't know how to do that without giving her pets help. She said, just keep telling her she's a good girl and talk to her. I like to talk to her. I did not know what to do with this dog. She was either across the room staring at me like this staring at the blank page or barking at the door i actually have a clip staring at the staring staring at the isn't that fun but back to me laying on the ground and i look at her and i just start talking to her in a dog voice and i say mona i don't know what my next video should be about i'm trying here i'm really trying she looks at me she takes a little pulse and she walks on over and she takes a little head and she scoops my hand, which I am told means I would like to be petted. And I just kind of pet her and she curled up next to me and I teared up three times in the like 20 minutes that she was there. And she gave me my answer. She said, hey bitch, make a video about this bitch. Intermittent Mona footage of her at her Aunt Mary's apartment. Look at her, she's so cute now that she decided to like me. But watch out, Mona, she's gonna cough. <laughs> Are you okay? And to now pivot to talk about God again. I kind of had this moment of what can we learn about dogs when instead of 
God's bearing the divine, we bear the divine to dogs. And that I laid down and I said, Mona, you can come to me if you want to, but I'm not gonna force you. And even if you won't let me pet you, I'm not gonna um, abandon you outside. Or even if you're barking nonstop at the door, I'm not gonna not feed you. There's a lot going on outside. Why are they mowing the lawn at 8.30 p.m.? Hold up. At 8.30 p.m.? Not my circus, not my monkeys. Back to Mona. I can't blame her for barking. She's a dog. Dogs are gonna bark. Just like we're humans. Humans are gonna kick and scream and yell. But I knew best in the fact that I knew what was going on and I knew she was just trying to protect me. She was on high alert. She wanted to make sure everyone was safe. She's a little anxious girl. I get it, I am too. So I'd tell her to stop barking, but as soon as she'd calm down, I'd give her a treat or a little pet when she let me or play ball with her because she loves that. So she knows that I still love her. Like sure, maybe when I let her outside and she broke free of her collar and ran all the way across the parking lot, I didn't give her a treat when we came back from that walk, but I still let her know I cared about her. And I don't know about you all, but the parts of like the Bible or in stories where God is a punisher make me deeply uncomfortable sometimes. Like that's a facet of our religious text in like Christianity that I don't like to grapple with. You know, I'd like to avoid it at all costs. But interacting with Mona made me think, you know, if we're going to have these consequences from our actions, you know, in the idea of God being a parent, this is so loud. <laughs> this is so loud. Oh, it's right by my window now. Oh, I put up filming this video, so I have to just wait for it. I just gotta wait for it. You're doing your job, I'm doing my job. We're good. Screw it, I'm just gonna talk over it. If we're gonna have consequences for our actions of, you know, with God being a parental figure. I hope that it is how we interact with our dogs. That kind of consequence where it's like, hey, we can't be doing this right now. This isn't gonna be helpful for anything, but I still love you and I'll give you a little pat on the head and a little treat. Now, the last thing I kind of want to talk about in what dogs can teach us about God is actually from a blog posted by Pragmatic Hindu. But in it, they talk about how dogs are only here for relatively pretty short amount of time. They come into our lives and they go. And they write, the love I feel for my dogs, the kind of pure, unadulterated, unconditional love that allows me to wake up each morning no matter how tired or cranky or busy and smile spontaneously at their waiting faces, feed them with joy, play with them in order to make them happy, comfort them with cuddles, and always treat them with unfailing compassion and kindness is the kind of love that creates pure bliss. Because in that love, there is absolutely no expectation. It is love for love's sake. I accept them just as they are, flawed and imperfect and absolutely beautiful. I don't merely tolerate their antics. I take joy in them. And yet, and this is supremely important, I am not passionately attached, but compassionately detached. I know they are merely visitors in my life, here for a brief moment, sharing their love and accepting mine. And I accept their transitory presence, and that is why I am able to experience such joy. Where there is no desperate attachment, there is no fear. Where there is no fear, there is peace. And where there is peace, there is the capacity to love fully. And I love that. And I can't help but think, that must be how God feels about us. And that's really beautiful. And I'm glad we can get a taste of that divine love with our lovely canine friends. Thank you all for watching. This is a pretty short video. I hope you enjoy all of the Mona footage that I got. Like, comment, subscribe, tell me all your wonderful dog stories, and in the lovely words of Tara Mooney, dog bless. Okay, thank you again. Bye. Hey, Momo. My sister's name. Wants to say hi. 
Momo. Well, she's good. <laughs>